I have a great deal of sympathy for anybody that's a victim of terrorism, and I feel terribly strongly that if the terrorists can win in one place, they will be emboldened and will attack us every place. As you know, in New York City, we were attacked by Al Qaeda twice. 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center and the terrible tragedy in 2001 on September 11th when both the towers with roughly 3,000 people were brought down. Uh, we have to make sure that terrorists every place understand we're united to stop them from attacking innocent people and killing them. Mayor, you have said many times that Israel has the right to defend itself, but looking at this conflict, what do you say to those who criticize the efforts and, and cite the fact that they believe that this force is excessive? Well, let me just phrase it for you, something that will bring it home. If you're in your apartment and some emotionally disturbed person is banging on the door screaming, I'm going to come through this door and kill you, do you want us to respond with one police officer, which is proportional, or with all the resources at our command? Just think about it in that context. There's no such thing as proportional response to terrorism. This is not a game that we're playing by the Marcus of Queensbury rules. People's lives are at risk. And the fact of the matter is, since the uh, Israelis pulled out of Gaza in 2005, Hamas, rather than trying to build up Gaza, has tried to destroy Israel for their own political purposes. Uh, Hamas is a wholly owned subsidiary of Iran, and they're trying to every day kill innocent civilians in the streets by sending rockets randomly overhead, uh, just trying to kill as many people who happen to be in the way. You say people's lives are at risk, but aren't the people of Gaza, their lives, those Palestinians, at risk, caught in the middle of this conflict? Absolutely. And if Hamas wants to continue to kill them, they're going to continue to lob rockets. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's the ultimate cowardness to launch your attack with human shields around you. Uh, it's one of the oldest uh, sick things that terrorists do. Uh, they take civilians, they surround themselves with the civilians, and then they reach over their heads to attack you. And if you defend yourself by attacking back, uh, the civilians get in the way and they say, oh, look, you're uh, killing civilians. Uh, keep in mind, there's no question what's happening here. Uh, Hamas keeps sending rockets over. They've been doing it. Israel just started their response a few days ago. Hamas has been doing this since 2005. I don't know how many days in a row you need to prove that it's one side starting all this. Finally, the other side responds, and then you're going to say, oh, wait a second, I don't know who First, come on. Well, let me touch on that. You said Hamas has been doing this since 2005. But let's talk about the timing of this latest conflict. There are those who criticize it, saying that Israel is doing this now before the Obama administration takes office because they feel that Israel will get a thumbs up from the Bush administration. Wait a second. I think maybe you should, before you go saying things like that, check the facts. If you go and look, the number of rockets sent out of Gaza into Israel fell down to single digits per day during the ceasefire. Hamas broke the ceasefire two or three months ago, and it's now eight or nine hundred a day. Uh, that was done starting two or three months ago. And uh, it's not the Israelis that have picked the timing. It's Hamas who's picked the timing. Whether they're trying to do that to play to domestic concerns in Egypt, uh, in uh, Palestine, uh, in, in, in Gaza, or in the West Bank, in, uh, uh, in, in the United States, I have no idea. But there's just no question that they for a while didn't send any missiles out and then all of a sudden ratcheted it up two or three months ago to a, just a level that no government could possibly allow to go on. Governments have a responsibility to protect their citizens. Do you really want something less? I don't. And I can tell you, in New York City, we would not do anything but use all our resources to keep you safe. And in America, we'd use all our resources to keep uh, you safe. We wouldn't get, get involved in these ridiculous things like proportionalism. Proportionalism is for theoreticians. The real world is governments have a responsibility to protect their citizens with everything that they have.
so how do you find an answer to this? Where do you find the source of lasting peace in that region? I know you're speaking with the Israeli Prime Minister a little bit later. What are some of the things that are on the table, some possible solutions? Look, I, I am not the, I don't work for the State Department uh, or for the military uh, for America or for Israel. Uh, and it's up to them to find a peaceful solution. But the first ways you do it is you stop going and lobbing rockets and killing innocent people. Uh, then you sit down. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a new Secretary of State coming in and a new president coming in. Uh, maybe that's a good opportunity to get a fresh look at the dialogue, get people to think outside the box. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that. I have enormous confidence, as you know, in Senator Clinton's abilities, and I think she's going to be easily confirmed by the Senate and be a great Secretary of State. Uh, we all have an enormous hope that uh, President Obama, an expectation in fact, that he will be a president for change and that he will be a great president. And when he was here, he could not have been more clear in what he said. He said, if my daughters were being threatened, I would do everything I could with all my resources at my disposal to protect them. I feel the same way about my two daughters that he feels about his two daughters. And I hope you do about yours if you have kids.